Create React app has been my go-to for years when it comes to spinning up a React app. Need a demo app to play around with? Create React app. Need a production-ready app? Create React app it is. But now, I'm afraid the time has come for me to move on. Thanks for the memories, but I'll be using Vite from now on for my React apps. And in this video, we'll be taking a look at the differences between the two and why Vite is my new go-to. Managed by the folks at Facebook, Create React App was initially released to the public in July 2016. And we saw version five released in December of 2021. Create React App, which I'll refer to as CRA from now on, bundles together tools such as Webpack, Babel, and ESLint, all under the hood to give you a sort of no config React App. This means you only have one main dependency to keep these tools up to date, and you don't need to worry about how to set them up. Under the hood means it's built in, and you can't typically configure these yourself, though you can add ESLint config if you want. Webpack config, however, cannot be accessed unless you eject from CRA. The CRA team don't really recommend you do this, and ideally, if you can avoid configuring Webpack yourself, that's a pretty good thing. And if you're wondering what exactly is Webpack, it's a module bundler which essentially takes the large number of files that your app consists of, including all of the packages and external modules you're using, and generates one or a small number of files that are then plugged into your main HTML file. It will also watch for changes during development and will rebundle the app automatically. It uses Babel to transpile all of the newer JavaScript features to ES5, so you have wide browser support and it also helps you run a development server, among other things. Webpack has been around since 2014 and has enabled developers to do some pretty amazing things that would have previously been extremely difficult to achieve. It has been the leading JavaScript bundler for years, leaving behind earlier alternatives like Gulp and Grunt, but it's no longer the industry darling. If we take a look at the most recent state of JS results, Webpack is still the number one build tool when it comes to usage, which will probably be the case for a couple of years still but has dropped in recent years in satisfaction ratings from number one to the middle of the pack. 75% is still pretty good, but it's not quite 95%. It's still a great tool, but you can see up top for both interest and satisfaction are ESBuild and Vite. ESBuild came along a couple of years ago and unlike Webpack, it's not actually written in JavaScript. ESBuild is a JavaScript build tool, but it was actually written in Go. You see, JavaScript is an interpreted language, meaning it's interpreted at runtime by the browser. This means it's relatively slow, but Go is compiled to machine code, which makes it extremely fast. Vite is a build tool that has been built on top of ESBuild by Evan Yu of Vue.js fame. It takes advantage of new advancements in the web development ecosystem, including the availability of ES modules in the browser to create a lightning fast experience for developers. Apps bundled with Webpack can sometimes take minutes to compile and recompile, but Vite claims to be able to avoid all the waiting around that we've gotten used to. You see, when starting the dev server in a bundler-based app, tools like Webpack will crawl and build your entire application before the server is ready to go. Vite tackles this issue by dividing the modules of an application into two categories, dependencies and source code. Dependencies, often third-party libraries in plain JS, are unlikely to change during development. So Vite uses ESBuild to pre-bundle these dependencies. They claim that this bundling happens anywhere between 10 and 100 times faster than with JS-based bundlers, such as Webpack. The source code, files like your JSX, CSS, or other components from libraries like Vue or Svelte, are obviously subject to change. So these are served over native ES modules. In other words, now that the browser is able to, Vite lets it sort of do the job of a bundler itself. A similar approach is taken with hot module reloading. This is a feature available in Webpack that allows the module to replace itself without having to bundle the entire application again. In a nutshell, the browser again uses ES modules to perform a hot module reload. Webpack does have HMR, but it still slows down significantly as the size of the application grows. Vite handles bundling for production slightly differently, but as far as the development experience goes, the speed is a potential game changer. So is there still a reason to choose CRA over Vite? You could probably find reasons if you looked really hard, but I couldn't. The most notable differences for everyday users that I could find were the fact that you still have to import React in every JSX file, which you don't have to do in CRA since version 17, and also a difference in how you must import SVG files. There's a blog post on Medium by Can Dermis that goes into this and shows you an easy workaround for these emissions. I'll link to that article below, which is a good read. So from now, if I need to create a new React app, I will be using Vite or Remix. I haven't mentioned Remix in this video as it's not really a pure React framework, 
but I'll link to a remix video in the description below if you're curious about it. I'm a big fan and can't wait to see how it evolves. So let me know in the comments below if you plan on trying Vite and please be sure to like and subscribe and all that good vibey stuff. That's it from me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.